So we are going to understand the item one, the structure of item one, and the use case of item one. So you can see that the item one, they give you what? The products of the company. Basically, the item one give you a lot of information, the product, the operations, the what business they have. So if you want to understand the company, understand what product they produce, you should go to item one. So you see the Apple, they give you iPhone, Mac, iPad, I, iPad, all these other stuff listed in item one. And then you can see more stuff. Uh, they also give you like a competition, like how, what kind of competition the company is facing, right? And also research and R&D. So, and also customers, and also uh, intellectual property. So, so item one, anything about the company's product, operations, competitions, supply chain, and the com uh, the, all this stuff, you should find this uh, item one. But you make sure if you want a competition, you want to pass this out, right? You don't want to use the whole item one. You want to pass this section out to analyze how, com how what's the competition the company is facing. And, um, and uh, also they give you the uh, general purpose and the stuff. So, so what, how people using item one? The one people using item one is to measure uh, product similarity. So, so think about it. So, so in this data, they give you the description of the iPhone, right? If you get iPhone. So you look at Samsung. Samsung also give the description of the product, right? So if you look at the, 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 the text similarity between the two product description, you can find out how close are these two products. That's how people can use that to measure the product similarity using the similarity between the two descriptions. That's one use case of the 10K. That's a use case of the one 10K. I hope that makes sense to you because you can see that the, the, the Apple uh, describe this iPhone, describes Mac, describes iPad. If you look at Samsung, Samsung will dis describe the, the phone. I don't know what Samsung phone has. Uh, the Samsung, Samsung has a lot of product. So you have a description of Samsung product and you have a description of the Apple product. If you using AI to compare the text similarity between the two products of the two firms, and you can easily see who are the competitors of Apple and who are competitors of Samsung. And then use that analysis, you can help managers to make a decision, help investors to make a decision, right? This is one user case of this. So what other user cases also measuring new products? So how do we know what is new products? So so the, the, the solution is easy. So this is this is Apple's this year's uh, uh, 2021. 2021, uh, new pro, uh, uh, 10K. So what you do is you compare this year's product with previous product. If you have sent anything new in this uh, item one, that's new product. And AI can easily help you do that. You just GPT, ask GPT, compare the two reports. GPT will tell you this is the new product for Apple for this year, right? So you can see that a lot of use cases you have using the uh, using the large range model, you just easily compare the, the 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 product with previous year. You can easily find a new product, and with that new product, let's say you you want to go you if you want to if you let's say if you are like a manufacturing manufacturing company of cell phone, you want to go into the market. You don't know whether to go in or not. Use GPT to analyze this. You can see how many new product the competitive company is doing. And then you can make a decision whether you are going to produce iPhone or not, right? So these are the, these are the, uh, some of use case of this. And, uh, and the competitions, right? You can measure competitions. You can also measure uh, merger acquisition synergies. And uh, you can also, uh, once you have the product similarity, you can redefine the company at the industry level. So these are the use cases, use cases of this. So, so you can measure any two companies' product similarity. You can measure new product. You can measure competitions. You can measure merge acquisition, and you can new reclassify the company's industry. If you know uh, Samsung and Apple have similar product, and you can pull them together into an industry, which we, no one has defined before, right? These are the use case of this kind of uh, item one. And uh, uh, so if you guys look, look at more, you guys can see uh, they can construct the product similarity. There's some uh, more reading, you can do that. How exactly to construct them? How you get this kind of uh, text similarity? You guys can do that. So, uh, and uh, this is of some stuff. So this is an assignment I, we, I, I want you guys to do afterwards. So basically, I want you guys to identify all the new product launch it for the US, comp US public firms 2024. So basically, so we have a 6,000 public traded company in the US. I want you to identify the new product launch in that 2024, how we do that? 
Option one, manually check each company website and tell, tell professor, yes. The second one, don't manually do that. What do you do? So what do you do is you want to go to item one first. You get the product description, right? And then what else do you do? You want to get the you get get the sentence about the product uh, pro, about the pr uh, product description from the uh, 2024 and 2023, and then you can using the Google Bird to find what's the 10 sentence about new product, and then you can do the job. You can find new product for that company, right? So basically, the idea is compare this year's annual report with previous not annual report. Compare this year's 10K with previous 10K, and you get new sentence using Google Bird. And you can get this stuff, right? And you can get new new product. And uh, I have a I have a, a detailed video to explain how to use Google Bird. This is very powerful large language model. Everyone just fascinated about GPT, but uh, Google Bird is also as powerful as I think. It's just difficult to use. GPT, you open a web page, you prompt it, you say, "Give me an answer." GPT give you Google Bird can give you the same thing, but you have to program it. So it's difficult to use, but it's it's very powerful. So um, you can I give a I, I have a I have a um, I have a one now I have three videos explain the Google Bird how you use them in a technical way. Okay, you guys can check that. So uh, um, 